Okay. Let's get going. This might be a short one, we'll see. First thing is to evaluate this. We kind of did this in the last section when we were looking at exponents. Comes back to times tables, multiplication, your mastery of that. This is pretty straightforward. So nine squared equals nine times nine, which is 81. I think we know that one. So hopefully you guys got your first question correct. Try to do that without a calculator. Really easy and to be tempted to use one, but try to avoid that. Let's go on to the next one. This next one, negative eight squared. Now, before we go and do this, I do want to point out something from the last lesson, and it's the differentiation between these two things. A negative number to an exponent versus that a negative number in parentheses to an exponent. I want to point that out. And in this scenario, the way you would approach it is you would figure out whatever that number is to the exponent. And then no matter what, the answer is going to be negative. So it doesn't really matter that negative sign from the start at the end, it's going to get attached to it. Your answer is going to be negative regardless. Recall that. However, in this scenario, what you would do is decide, okay, well, is my exponent odd? Or is my exponent even? And depending on that, if the exponent's odd, then my answer would end up being negative. If my exponent's even, my answer would end up being positive. So you have to make sure that you understand the difference here of whether we have something in parentheses, a negative in parentheses versus say, and I'll just put this problem here, what if it was negative eight squared like this? You guys see the difference here? So this is negative eight, negative eight squared, negative eight squared. We'll then decide, okay, is that exponent odd? No, even, yes, and work it through. Well, in our problem, that would be an even exponent, so it's going to end up being positive. Negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64, because we did this, right? Negative 8 times another negative 8 equals 64. However, this one falls into this category. And when it's like this, we know without a doubt that our answer is going to be negative, no matter what. And so we simply just do eight times eight, eight squared. And so our answer is gonna be negative 64. Did you guys see that? Okay. It's just reinforcing what we talked about yesterday. And so which one is that? It's this one, this one, answer 64, not negative 64, because that whole negative eight is in parentheses like this scenario, not outside. Okay? Any questions about that at all? Very important distinction. Very important that we continue to be aware of that. All right, this next one. So in this next one, I have negative 2 to the third power. Notice it's negative 2 in parentheses. So is it this scenario? Hopefully you're thinking no. Is it this scenario? Yes. The negative two, the whole negative two is in parentheses. So then we need to decide, are we to an odd power or are we to an even power? Well, my problem is to an odd power. So I know immediately that when I have a negative number to an odd exponent, my answer is gonna be negative. And so you could simply do the math. That's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the third power, which is 8. So my answer is negative 8. Another way that you can think about it is if you don't happen to see that it's a negative 2 to an odd power, you don't remember this, just do the math. What is this saying? It's saying a negative 2 times a negative 2 times another negative 2. Well, what is that? Negative 2 times negative 2 is? 
positive 4. Positive 4 times another negative 2 is going to end up being a negative 8. So this rule is just extra help. But you can still do it all by yourself and get the correct answer. Any questions? You guys got it? Got your number three correct? Please let me know if it's not. I'm happy to help. I'll do your problem. Okay. All right. Look at this one. I have negative five squared. Negative five squared. Is that negative five in a set of parentheses? No, it's not. When it's not itself in its own set of parentheses, look at the difference between these two. Contrasting these two, immediately we know the answer is going to be negative. And then all you have to do is do the actual 5 squared part. 5 times 5, which is 25. Questions about that at all? Okay. Okay, got your number four, number five. Okay, number five, negative two to the fourth power. So let me do that here. So I have negative two to the fourth power. Take a look here. Which is it like? Is it like this one? 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 Which one is it like? This one or this one? Well, the whole negative is in parentheses. So we can conclude that it's going to fall into this category. If it falls into this category where the base of the exponent, the whole thing, the base, is in parentheses, then we can simply follow the rules of odd even. My exponent is even. I have a negative number to an even power, so my answer is going to be positive. Now, all I have to do is do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 four times, right? And so whatever the result of that is, I already know the answer is going to be positive. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. There's my answer. Now again, alternatively, if you didn't know the rule, you can simply do negative 2 times another negative 2 times another negative 2 times another negative 2, and you would get the same thing. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. Negative 8 times a negative 2 is a positive 16. Still works out. Questions about that at all? Okay. Got yours correct without using a calculator? All right. Let's take a look at this one. This looks very similar to what we did last class. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to skip number six because you did a homework over it. Let's see if we got any other ones. Okay, I like seven. Seven's a little bit better and something that could have its own set of challenges. So you guys can go back and do number six all by yourself. Let's do number seven. Now, number seven is tricky because when you initially look at it, it can be very confusing as to what you should do first. But if you recall from the previous class, if we're doing order of operations, things in parentheses, nothing to do, nothing to do, exponents, no exponents, multiplication and division. Now, if you think that, then your eye should see that there is multiplication in this problem. Where is the multiplication? Right there. That's the multiplication that needs to be done first. Not this subtraction, this multiplication. So as long as you recognize that, then you're going to leave the negative 7 alone and multiply negative 3. Remember we saw this last time? Take the entire sign. Negative 3 times negative 4 is not just 12, but positive 12. Make sure that you include the sign with it. If you don't include the sign, you're going to have a lot of trouble connecting the ideas for your final step. So here we go. Negative 7 plus 12. Negative 7 plus 12. There's your final step. The signs are opposite, so you're going to subtract the 2, which leaves you with 5. Take the sign of the bigger number. 7 is smaller than 12. 12 is the bigger number. So my answer is going to be positive. Done.
and you get the right answer for yourself, hopefully, okay? Any questions? Anything I can do? Can I do your problem? All right, let's keep going. Okay, number eight. Okay, so like we talked about yesterday, you're going to look for parentheses first. And when we say parentheses, parentheses with stuff needing to work out within them. These don't have things to work out within them, so nothing. However, in my problem here, this set of parentheses certainly has something that can be worked out. So I'm going to do that. Negative 3 minus 8 would be negative 11. And then I'll just bring down everything else. Now from here, this problem looks actually very similar to what we did in the previous one. So what would I do? Well, not this subtraction because subtraction does not come before multiplication. Negative 4 times negative 11 is a positive 44. So 6 plus 44. Notice how that worked out and see how it's very similar to our previous. And then finally, you can add them. 6 plus 44 is 50. Any questions about number 8? Questions at all? Questions? Things I can help you with? Okay. Number nine. So for you, it should look, all these problems should look very similar to things that we did in the previous section. Nothing should really jump out as new per se, just more practice off of the things we did in the previous section. All right, anything to do that looks like this, in parentheses, stuff that can be worked out in parentheses? No. However, do we have now exponents to do? Sure we do. And so that's what we would tackle next. Negative two squared, negative four squared, so that's gonna be four times a positive four, minus seven times a positive 16. Negative two squared is a positive four. Negative four squared is a positive 16. Notice how now you have to know all this side exponent work by yourself that we just started the section with. You gotta be able to do that. Negative two squared is a negative two times a negative two, or you can use this general rule here. Are there any questions about that first step? Okay, let's keep going. We've taken care of all the exponents. We'll now look for any multiplication or division. Well, we have two. This multiplication and this multiplication. I want to point something out that's very important. We always include the sign. Always include the sign when we multiply. The question got asked in the last section and it still rings true and is consistent. Look at what we did here. We included the sign in that multiplication. We included the sign in that multiplication. See how my brace extends all the way through including the sign, okay? So there it is, four times four is 16. Negative seven times 16, a negative seven times a positive 16 is gonna be a negative, what is it, 112? And if you're not sure, you can go do the work off to the side. Seven times six is 42. Seven times one is seven plus four is 11, 112. Now again, look, theme after theme after theme, repeated theme of mastery with times tables. So important. And then finally, we can close this down by doing this subtraction. 16 minus 112, well, the signs are different. That's a positive 16 and a negative 112. That tells me I'm gonna to need to do subtraction. 
112 minus 16, 6, 10 minus 1 is 9. So it looks like 96. And since the signs are different, we take the sign of the larger number, negative 96. Now, the only thing that's really difficult about this problem is that the numbers are kind of bigger. Multiplication is a little tougher. Subtraction is a little bit tougher. Bigger numbers. I hope that you're working hard to do this without a calculator. That's ideal. Okay. Any questions about your number nine? Yes. So it wants me two to the negative seven to the squared power minus four negative three uh, squared. Okay. Tell me your first line. Uh, d to the negative seven. Great. Squared, what do you get? 49. Good. And then what else? The, uh, negative 3. Great. Negative nine. What do you get? 9. Tell me left to right exactly what my next, the second line should look like after you've worked everything out. Uh, 2 and then put the 49 in parentheses. Very good. Minus 4 and then put the 9 in parentheses. There you go. Nicely done. That's really good. Consistently the same as mine. Correct multiplication, correct signage, looking good. What's next? Multiply. Good. Yeah, 78. Hmm, there's your mistake. That's, right. That's it. Do you see it? So, redo that and then tell me what you get. That's it. Just a small, and I think that you may have run it kind of in your head. Small mistake. How do I know it's not 78 immediately? Because 2 times 4 is an 8. Right. That's how I immediately know that's probably not quite right. Do the math. Take your time. That's fine. There you go. Good job. And the second one. Yeah, it's raised though. That's okay. You might have had the second one correct. It's no big deal. 36? Correct. Positive or negative? Negative. There you go. Always make sure to state the sign with it. And now it's just a matter of subtracting the two, right? Is your answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. Very good, because the bigger number is positive. Did you get an answer by chance? 62. There you go. Good work. Just a small mistake on, once again, that theme of multiplication. And even if you're good at multiplication, it's very easy to make small mistakes. So, good. Anybody else with a question on number nine? Okay, great. Let's go on to 10. Okay, so 10 is a pretty complete problem. Let's see if we can do this. All right. So let's go one step at a time. My first step is to ask, do I have things to work out within the parentheses. Anything to work out within? Yes. 4 minus 6, 1 minus 2. Let's go do that. 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. I'm going to leave that in parentheses and attach everything that needs to be attached. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. I'm going to leave that in parentheses and attach everything that needs to be attached. So notice how I have worked everything in the parentheses down just like I did here, negative three minus eight is negative 11, and then I just leave it in parentheses. Now from here, given our experience with the previous two problems, notice how this problem looks identical, nearly identical, to the start of the previous two problems that we did. After we do this cleanup of the stuff in parentheses, we're basically, at the start of the previous two. What's the difference? Instead of going to the second power, we're going to the third power, which is not that big of a deal. Recall that we did some of those already earlier. Negative two to the third, negative two to the fourth, that kind of stuff. So let's go do this. Negative two to the third, what's that gonna be? Well, we actually already did it, it's negative eight. If you didn't do it, you can always put it off to the side and go work it off to the side. So negative two to the third power is a negative eight, and I'll attach anything to it that I haven't worked on. Now negative one to the third power is gonna be a negative one. 
negative one times negative one times negative one, negative one. Or negative to an odd power is gonna be negative one times one times one. Lots of different ways to look at it, but there it is. And that's what we did in the second line of our work to lead into the third. Any questions about what we just did there? Feeling okay? All right, let's keep going. Now notice how this line is just like this one. And all we have to do is do our times tables. Seven times negative eight is a negative 56. Be careful with both your signs and the multiplication. The second pair, notice, I'm not just gonna do the seven. Negative seven times negative one. Negative seven times negative one is gonna be a positive seven. And now I'm ready to clean this up. Negative 56 plus seven is gonna be what? Negative 49. Got it? Any questions about number 10 from anybody? Want me to do yours? All right, on to 11. This is a really complete problem, so let's go take a shot at this one. Let's take a look here. Very, the reason why this is difficult is because most students are going to look at this and just get overwhelmed and not know where to start. Well, why don't we ask the questions we've been asking for the last class and a half. Number one, are there any parentheses with things to get worked on? Are there any parentheses with things to get worked on within them? The answer is no. So we move on to the next. Are there any exponents? that can be addressed. Yes, absolutely. We've got this exponent and this exponent. So if there are any exponents, 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 exponents that can be addressed, we're gonna go do those. Five squared, 25, three squared, nine. And anything that didn't get worked on, just carry it down exactly the way that it looks. Be careful and make sure you're a, organized in and aligning all of your steps. If you do that, you're going to be less likely to make a mistake. Okay, after exponents, we look for multiplication and division. Now, we do see multiplication and we do see division. Now, the question is, do I do the multiplication first before the division, just knee jerk? The answer is no. I don't because if multiplication is sitting connected to side by side with division, I'm gonna work left to right. So that is actually what should happen first. Notice again, I included the sign. I included the sign here. When multiplication or addition and subtraction are sitting side by side, connected, connected, you always work left to right, so that's what I'm going to do next. Negative 27, the whole thing, not just 27, negative 27 divided by 9 is going to, positive 9 is going to be a negative 3. That's it. That's what I did. And so now I'm going to bring down anything else that I did not work on. Following me, the questions. Okay. Now, what's next? Well, the multiplication. That's what's next, not subtraction not subtraction, this multiplication. And so negative three times a positive three, include the sign. It's a negative nine. Bring down anything else that you did not work on. See how by doing this and working through methodically, using the skills that we've worked on the, cl the last class and a half, we're gonna be less likely to make mistakes and get overwhelmed. Okay, 25 minus 9, negative 9 minus 19, which one do we do first? Left to right. 
There's the first one, 25 minus nine would be, what, uh, 16? Then minus that 19. And then 16 minus 19 is the last step. 16 minus 19, negative three. Now, work yours. See if you can get yours correct. Let me know if you have questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Any questions? Anybody want me to do your number 11? Let me just let you know. Slow me down, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna move on to 12 unless somebody slows me down. All right, let's go to 12. Okay. All right, so I've got something that we haven't seen for a little bit. And what are these vertical bars? They're absolute value bars, not to be confused with parentheses, brackets, or braces. These absolute value bars are groupings. They do group things and collect things, but there's a function connected to them, which we'll discuss in just a moment. So let's first address parentheses, groupings in general. We always look for the innermost. Recall from the previous notes that when you see a grouping, that you always wanna look deep inside of it to see if there's more to do, and that's this right here. So this actually comes first. We need to address that part first. Seven minus 17 is going to be a negative 10. I'm gonna leave that in parentheses because I'll deal with what's about to come up in a moment, but notice how I write it down. 7 minus 17 is negative 10. I put it in parentheses, kind of like how I did in these problems. Negative 3 minus 8, left it in parentheses. 4 minus 6, left it in parentheses. 1 minus 2, left it in parentheses. You guys with me? All right, consistent. Now, I'm done with this one, but now I'm going to move out to address this right here. Now, what did we say before? If you don't recall, we said that if we had a, a minus a negative b, like that, what did it become? It became a plus b. 
Recall that, that's from your previous notes. So look at this one. What is this gonna become? 10 plus 10. So be aware that we have seen this rule, but you may be a little bit rusty with it, and it's no big deal. Just make sure that you understand that we've got these double negatives. Two negatives are gonna make a positive right here. And now we can clean this up pretty easily. 10 plus 10 is 20. And we'll talk about this in just a moment. This is the most important thing right now is that you can clean up everything inside the absolute value bars down to a single number. Whether that number is positive or negative right now doesn't make a difference. You just want to be able to take this and simplify it to something like this. Any questions about that? The first several steps. Now, if you don't recall, let me refresh you that the absolute value of any negative number or any positive number is what? The positive version of the number itself. So if I'm, this is not just a grouping. It functions as both a grouping and a function to make sure that whatever number is inside here becomes positive. So what's 20, the absolute value of it? It's positive 20. And so now I have two times positive 20. Now, why is this important? Because what if your number was negative 20 here? What if it was negative 20? Well, it would come out of the absolute values after the absolute value operation was done to it, become positive 20. So that's really important to note. There is no way that whatever from here down can be negative. That's the important takeaway here. Got it? Then finally, of course, we're gonna multiply these, two times 20 is 40, and you're done. Got it? Did you get your right answer? Yeah, okay. And I'm gonna leave, ah, we'll just do it together. Just one more problem, this will be it for us. We'll call it a day. Let's do this one and be done. All right, so this is the last problem of the day. Let's work things out, shall we? Notice, I've got multiplication inside this, these absolute value bars. So I'm gonna do that first. Nine times negative seven. Nine times negative seven, it's hard, if it's hard to see there, there it is, nine times negative seven. That has to get worked out first. What is that? Negative 63. And I'll just write down everything else, because I didn't work it out. So look what I did there. I did nine times the negative seven, what was in the absolute value. With me, okay? What's next? Well, I'm gonna finish this. What is the absolute value of a negative number? It's the positive version of that number. And that's it. The absolute value of a negative number, any negative number, is the positive version of it. So that's everything that this piece becomes. This whole piece becomes positive 63. And I can, if you want, you can do this at the same time to save some time if you want. Seven, a positive seven times a negative 12 is gonna be a negative 84. So if you want to, you can do both of them at the same time or do it in two steps, it doesn't really matter. And now it's pretty straightforward. Negative 84 plus 63. Subtract the two, oh, it's going to be, what, 121 and negative 21. Done. Anybody have questions about their number 13?